Hi guys, um, Terry again here. Um, I'm going to be going through the solution to question three of the January 2022 paper, right? Um, for those of you who haven't done so as yet, um, please hit subscribe and like to my channel, right? Um, so I'm going to do the third question. All right, so the third question here. So a box, the box below contains the names of five quadrilateral. So you have a trapezium, a kite, a rhombus, a square, a rectangle. Now they want us to choose one quadrilateral from the box that best. So notice they, would, they put the word best in brackets here. So the first one is something has no lines of symmetry and rotational symmetry of order one. So you all need to understand what is rotational symmetry and what is um, lines of symmetry, right? So I have the, the five shapes that we're looking at here, the rectangle. If you look at the rectangle here, in terms of lines of symmetry, you have one here and you have one here. What that means is that when I fold this shape, this plain shape, along those lines of symmetry, they're going to line up exactly. So in the case of a square, you have four lines of symmetry. The kite only has one. The trapezium has no line of symmetry. And the rhombus has two, right? Now, when it comes to rotational symmetry now, right, um, that has to do with when you rotate your plain shape, how many times it actually lines up with it, right? Um, so let's see. If something has no lines of symmetry and has a rotational symmetry of order one. Now, when you have a rotational symmetry of order one, what that means is that the only way I'm going to get my shape to line up when I rotate it is to make a full circle, to make 360, right? So we want, it has no lines of symmetry. The only quadrilateral there that had no line of symmetry would have been the trapezium. So what I would have put here is my trapezium. Right, that's what I would have, I would have put here. The second thing here now, um, they said is something has exactly two lines of symmetry and four right angles. So when we have four right angles, what we're talking about here is either a square or a rectangle. But they said we only have Two lines of symmetry so if you look at these diagrams here the only one that actually has that will be my rectangle so this here I would have put rectangle for this one right and then the last one here now they said a something has one line of symmetry but no rotational symmetry so it has one line of symmetry so based on our diagrams here the only one that has one line of symmetry is the kite but the thing is, they are saying um, it has no rotational symmetry. Well, the thing is, if you rotate the kite by 360, technically, you can get it to line up with itself, right? So the order of rotation should have been one. But we have to use the best answer. So I'm going to use kite here. All right, so that's part A. Part B now, we have two, we have a shape here. We have two parallel lines. So these arrows indicate which two lines are parallel. Um, they want us to figure out what is Q and what is R. Now, this here is 54 degrees and this here is R. You have two intersecting lines, right? So therefore, R has to be 54 degrees. So R, we can write what R is here one time. That's 54 degrees and that has to do with the fact that they are vertically opposite. Right? They're vertically opposite. When it comes to Q now, where is Q? All right, Q is here. Now you just work out this and you got 54 degrees, right? And you want to figure out what Q is. This line here is what we call a transverse line, right? And it's cutting two parallel lines. The fact that it's doing that, it means that Q, this angle here, and this angle here, R, which is 54, they are co-interior angles. Now, co-interior angles are supplementary, meaning that when I add them up, I should get 180 degrees. So therefore, Q plus R, which is 54 degrees, is equal to 180 degrees. So therefore, Q is equal to 180 degrees minus 54 degrees. So therefore, Q, I'm going to use my calculator to work that out, 180 minus 54 And I'm going to get 126. So therefore, angle Q is 126 degrees, right? So this here is going to be 126 degrees. 
and we're using the fact that we have co-interior angles. All right, now, oh wait, I almost missed this piece here. Give the geometrical reason why angle P is 71 degrees. Where is angle P now? Okay, so again, we have another transverse line here. This angle here is 71, and this here has to be 71 degrees as well. But they want what they want the reason why it's that. So the reason for that has to do with the fact that the, the P and the 71 are alternate angles, right? So all we need to see here is alternate angles. That's what we're talking about. Right? But see now we have some shapes here, right? We have two triangles. But if you look carefully how they label the shapes, you have X prime, Y prime, and Z prime. You have X double prime, Y double prime, and Z double prime, right? So here's what I want to do. Right, so they give us, they told you some information here. So X prime, Y prime, double prime is the image of X, Y, Z after an enlargement of scale factor two and the center of enlargement is five, one. Now, you have to be careful with this question. On the diagram, they have not given you what the original triangle is. That's what they want you to find. So draw triangle X, Y, Z, which we don't have that. We don't have that. That's my object. So they are asking us to locate the object because we know what the image is, right? So this here is my image. That's my image. And I want to figure out what is the object, right? Uh, but they give us two pieces of information. Your scale factor is two. So that means that K is two. And they also give you the center of rotation, which is five one, right? So this is my diagram here, right? So basically, this here, this triangle here is my image. And this is my center of enlargement. So they want us to locate where the object is, right? Now, what we have to do in order to um, achieve that, we're going to draw, you're going to draw a line from, let's say, X, I'm sorry, Y prime to my center of enlargement. You're going to draw a line. So this is what you're doing in the exam, you know. Draw a line from X prime to the center of enlargement. You do the same thing on this side here, right? Now, because they told me that the scale factor is um, is two, right? Now the thing is, you the image has to be, sorry, not the image. The object has to be somewhere between the image. So remember, this is your image here. So your object has to lie between your image and your center of enlargement. So the first thing I would do, since I know the scale factor is two, right? I would measure from here, take my ruler, measure from here to here, and find half of that, right? If I find half of that, this here, this point on that red line is going to give me the location of Y, right? That's what I'm going to do. That's the location of Y. The next thing now, since you know from here to here is two units, right? Remember, that's an enlarged image. So your object has to be half that length. So if it's half that length, right, it means that this point here has to be X, right? And since you know what X is, you can easily figure out where Z is going to be now. So since from here to here is four units, this length going down here, right? This length going down here has to be two units. So therefore, Z is actually here. So this is where Z is, right? So therefore, my um, the triangle we're looking for is going to be this. Right? So that is where your um, object is going to be located, right? So that's what they want for that part of the question. The next part now, they told us that triangle X prime, Y prime, and Z prime is mapped onto X double prime, Y prime, Z double prime by a reflection in the line P, state the equation of the mirror line. So if you go back to, let's go back to maybe this one here, right? This one is a clean thing here. So these two triangles, they are basically being reflected in some line, 
All you guys need to do here is to measure, so that is draw a line from let's say y to y prime and just find the midpoint of that. So that is one, two, three, four, five, six. So therefore this here, all we need to do is to drop, this is where my mirror line is going to be. Now since it's a vertical line, right, the equation is going to be x is equal to two. Right? That's what they want. They want the equation of your mirror line. Right? That's the equation of my mirror line. Right? So the answer for this part here is simply going to be x is equal to 2. Alright? So that's it for question 3.